Estás viendo Canal América, Televisión Dominicana para el Mundo. A Time for True Show is sponsored by the Office of Dr. Bernard Fiakoff, a periodontal, dental implant and laser specialist in New York City, for over 40 years. Dr. Fiakoff was honored by the International College of Dentists and Pierre Fauchard, and received the Presidential Lifetime Humanitarian Honor from the White House. Call us at 718-229-3838. Sometimes life can be so damn hard You don't know where to go Everything is falling apart Try to do your best, but only God knows that you've given everything you've got. But the world takes you down. You just keep moving on. Let your feet. Welcome to A Time for True Show. I'm your host, Dr. Bernard Fialkoff. It's a pleasure to have you back with us again. And tonight we have a very important show, a lot of cutting information, very modern, very breakthrough technology. And we're going to get right to it because it has to do with our kids and their health, their well-being. And that we're very lucky to have someone who's taking the time to be with us tonight, Mark Richard Moeller. And we want to put his pictures up on the screen, Buddha. Mr. Moeller is Managing Director of the Academy of Oral Facial Myofunctional Therapy and the Executive Director and Founding Board Chair of the Academy of Applied Myofunctional Sciences. He's spoken on oral facial myofunctional therapy in 28 countries and supported the facilitation of research, public health projects, clinical protocols, and curriculum developed in oral myofacial therapy with over 50 universities, hospitals, governments around the world. He's fluent in French, Spanish, English, and Portuguese, and has been director of communications of the Stanford Sleep Epidemiology Research Center. He's a graduate of the University of California, San Diego, an adjunct professor at the University of the Pacific Dugoni School of Dentistry and postgraduate sleep residency program. He has been on a public health committee of the Tesla de Lingua of Brazil, and he's had extensive experience as a senior executive in finance, strategies of bridging across multinational financial conglomerates, and in joint venture integration, he has tremendous expertise in sales, marketing strategy, management, and many years in positions at Wells Fargo, Halifax Bank of Scotland, Lloyd's TSB in the UK, Deutsche Post Bank, and JP Morgan. Unbelievably, he's also a film producer, having developed a television series, documentaries, feature films, based in London, Sao Paulo, Brazil, Shanghai, China, and New York City. Quite a diverse human being. We're very lucky to have him in Buddha. If we bring him up on the screen, I want to bid a warm welcome to Mark Muller. Welcome to A Time for Shoe Show, my friend. Thank you very much, my friend. It's, it's such an honor to be here. Uh, your passion for public service and dissemination of information is remarkable. And uh, I know we have a short time here. We have an important story to tell. Absolutely. We want to get right to it. I, I want to let the viewers know that this man is extremely busy, but he has so much love and care for your children. We're going to have this show and you'll see why in a moment. And so I want to get right to it because, as you said, we have a limited time. So let's talk about kids and let's talk about newborns and, 
and the myofunctional uh, therapy that you're in, first of all, so they don't develop a misunderstanding, explain to the viewers what is myofunctional therapy? Well, there uh, is, is something called in in medicine stoma and anathic system and uh, this is uh, a term more in use in Europe a little bit in Latin America and Asia but they're interrelated functions and postures related to chewing breathing swallowing oral rest posture the tongue and lip seal and these actually they're autonomic or automatic you don't think about it you don't think about oh I'm gonna take a chew or I'm going to take a swallow, or I'm going to take a breath. They actually eat up about 30% or more of our brain activity. So this is a very important center that controls life and death. And it turns out that these functions and postures are relatively plastic, which means you can repattern them, just like you learn a new tennis swing or a new dance step. And by a new neural pathway to these centers, you can affect change, whether it be someone who suffered from stroke or Parkinson's and wants to has to go around a, a certain area in their brain to relearn how to swallow or smile for their granddaughter's wedding, or a, a newborn who may have been prematurely born and didn't have the good fortune of having uh, breast milk from their mother's breast, but maybe was intubated for a couple of months uh, in order to, to feed. And so that, that poor child, you know, they learned that their tongue belongs on the floor of their mouth, maybe the mouth breathe, and uh, that's what the brain thinks. The brain's kind of like a computer. And so what does that mean for people for humanity there are over a billion people who have an advanced state of disease called obstructive sleep apnea this is when the tongue uh, closes the back of the airway and the oxygen level desaturates the oxygen in the blood goes down because someone's essentially choking um, this is a very advanced disease state which downstream from there, or to put it another way, it results in the major killers of our time. Obesity, cancer, heart disease, hypertension, diabetes, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's. This is known. These are scientific facts. And about 90% of the people who have this, maybe... 80%, 90% don't even know it. Maybe they suspect something's wrong, sleepy. Maybe up to 60% of traffic accidents result from this sleepiness. And uh, hold on, you've got another billion people who have another sleep disorder called sleep disordered breathing. This might be snoring. This might be upper airway resistance syndrome, which can have the same impact and effect as sleep apnea or it, it can actually be a precursor state so we're saying at least two billion people and there's practically no public health guidance around what to do there's no education in the schools and this is the scandal and I, I put in an application to do some graduate work at the Yale School of Public Health which is, I am so honored to be here in, in New Haven uh, in order to, to help push sleep into public health through this vehicle of myofunctional therapy. Believe it or not, the World Health Organization has zero guidance around sleep. Can you believe that? Unbelievable. UNICEF. They're not even aware, not even aware of zero. it. Zero. Wow. Well, there, there's... Uh, effort a committee with the World Sleep Society, which is you know chipping away at making progress. Uh, the, the first definition of oral health actually came out in like 2017, 2018, led by a think tank with the World Dental Federation, led by Michael Glick and David Williams. 
Uh, Michael Glick was at Buffalo. Uh, he's now in a private institute at Penn. And David Williams is at St. Mary's uh, College in London. Uh, they're uh, experts in dental public health. And uh, we, I have great sense of urgency about this. As you mentioned, thank you for looking at my biography. You know, I have other interests, other things that I love to do. I have uh, two cats and a dog, two boys that I love, August and Nico. Hi, August. Hi, Nico. I call them the tigers. And, you know, I have a great urgency to do something. It's as if, you know, you're walking down the street and you see a house on fire, right? And the window's open and you you see there's children in there, like maybe a baby in a, in a crib and he's screaming. And you know, you can reach in the window and pull this child out. Well, who wouldn't do that? Everybody would do that. And, you know, I just happen to be able to see this. My mother, Joy Muller, is a pioneering leader in this emerging field of medicine, orofacial myofunctional therapy. Uh -huh. And we have a great, great sense of urgency. So I got kind of sucked into helping her out. And when I grew up around this, she missed my birthday a lot because she was lecturing in Copenhagen or Brussels again. Or, and, uh, you know, she had a bunch of crazy friends who really passionate about science and helping people and uh so i i thought i would help them out my mom's like dying you've got to do something you with all of your organization and development skills you know you gotta you gotta do something so anyway i i got uh, kind of uh, shanghai into organizing a symposium on on how to advance this started about 13 12 13 and that led to a symposium at University of California, San Diego, uh, where we had about 60 people from 15 countries with the assistance of a foundation called, that was called the Center for the Health Professions, which is housed at University of California, San Francisco, looking at future delivery of healthcare models. Uh, they all got together behind my back, all 60 of them, and said, Mark, you got to do this. You got to leave this. And I'm like, no. I have nothing to do with healthcare. And they're like, it's a public health mission. Someone's got to do it. So anyway, here I am, you know, 12, 13 years later, we started the Academy of Applied Myofunctional Sciences. I built Amazing. out this institute, uh -huh. a private institute based in California, Academy of Orofacial Myofunctional Therapy. And uh, the institute is mostly known for training clinicians, but uh, we've also been involved with public health projects around the world. Uh, and uh, universities, I think you saw maybe an uh, older bio, it's more than 100 universities now around the world, hospital groups, got some governments. And um, we have, uh, you know, been rushing and running as hard as we can to develop curriculum. We have textbooks, we have med devices that have gotten FDA clearance, like the froggy mouth. Um, and, you know, uh, I, wanted, I, wanted have... to, to, I wanted to ask you something because we were talking before we started the show and you said something very interesting to me that a person may start breathing through their mouth thinking that they're going to get more oxygen because the surface area increases. But then you went into a whole explanation that I'd love our viewers to hear. So tell us, you know, why is it if we start breathing through the mouth, which is a bigger area, why is that not beneficial what tell us what happens well it's it's about gas exchange uh, on a surface area level you can get down to very simple physics you know um it, when you're breathing through your nose you're not only filtering the air warming it up there's a little gas exchange passing on nitrous oxide um but uh you're restricting the flow and the volume and when you're breathing through your mouth you're breathing more volume of air. So people who are mouth breathing can be breathing, you know, seven times as much air as, you know, a nasal breather. And because they're exhaling, you know, there's a bigger surface area, they wind up losing and dissipating their carbon dioxide. And the carbon dioxide molecule in the blood is necessary for hemoglobin to attach oxygen and so what they might wind up experiencing is lower 
for oxygen life. and for a baby or a child or an adult or a senior citizen these are all consequential especially as the brain is developing and we know that the the human brain is pretty much growing until someone reaches around the age of 26 but if a child for instance breathing you know maybe they had an allergy and their nose got stuffed up and they started breathing through their mouth and it's stuck. you know the brain is like a computer you know you tell it what to do and that's what it does it doesn't it doesn't really know any better there could be instincts if you look at animals in nature you don't have any mouth breathing except for overbred breeds of dogs you know if a horse is mouth breathing they they euthanize it you know it's 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 a very serious thing and with the industrial revolution with change in diets you know these kids 10,000 years ago might have not made it they're surviving with bottle feeding with acute care in the hospitals for premature babies you know with uh, you know but it, say you get a premature baby right they get intubated to get feeding and so they're, they learn to think that their tongue posture is on the floor of their mouth maybe they're predisposed to being mouth breathers mm -hmm. you know whereas a, a baby who's breastfed i'll give a shout out to shelly marmet who's uh, one of my mother's best friends she's you know helped create and and the profession of lactation consulting so she's like my aunt uh and uh anyway the uh baby who learns to have that low tongue posture uh -huh. and is going to be mouth breathing it'll change the way the bowl forms the, without the tongue resting on the palate that subtle pressure of the tongue is not going to be there to create a nice dome shape in the upper palate so the mandible you know the the lower jaw will become retruded as will the maxilla and there'll be a higher more narrow palate and there's consequently there's less space even for the tongue and what's going to happen too when that person uh has their tongue posture on the floor of their mouth there's going to be a correlation to scoliosis because wow. they're going to have to hold their head forward and or rotate their skull back in order to open up their airway to breathe so it's going to change the trajectory of their growth and development into a suboptimal state. And then back to your question about the brain. Right. We know scientific that if these children, as they're developing, when the brain just develops like crazy, you know, really, you know, until someone's in their 20s. Uh, but really, at these early years, their brain, uh, the two hemispheres of their brain, the oxygen desaturations, the sleep apnea, the sleep disorder, breathing, the snoring, there are two hemispheres of their brain by the time they're four, five, six, seven, eight, will never meet as nature intended. So what does that mean in, in practical terms? Right. Maybe they'll, they'll be a little different. You know, they'll experience life a little differently. Maybe they'll wind up with an autism, spectrum diagnosis attention deficit hyperactivity disorder one of my colleagues and, and dear friend Stephen sheldon uh we've had some engagement with his group at lurie children's hospital northwestern university in chicago he has his practice of pediatric sleep medicine you know it's like the bible for pediatric sleep he's one of the pioneers and he can say this i can't say this but he can go out and say because he's like you know emeritus grand poobah uh, he can he can say the vast majority of adhd diagnoses are actually mistakenly orofacial myofunctional disorders that will result in sleep disorders and so the child who gets antsy hyperactive kind of penetrating on their nails you know gets called hyperactive or you know ADHD or ADD you know might wind up with a Ritalin prescription Ritalin is an uh, amphetamine variant why would you give a kid speed 
Why would you give them an amphetamine? Right. They're tired. They're tired, and that's what calms them down. That's why they're acting up because they're odd, they're rocking. You know, they're they're, they're acting out. Uh, you know because their autonomic nervous system has shifted, this is maybe an oversimplification, shifted to a fight or flight because their body is in jeopardy. It's experiencing a certain level of stress and trauma. And, uh, you know, there's, there's no public health really guiding around this and, and looking to screen children for mouth breathing. We want to change that. We want to get guidance within the American Academy of Pediatrics. We want to get guidance in the American Academy of Pediatric Dentistry and their corresponding academies and institutions around the world. We want Absolutely. to get guidance. Let me, let, me, let me interject. I wanted to ask you a question because um, as you're speaking and you're talking about really the importance of the nasal breathing for a child and for anyone really, so then what would be the purpose of removing tonsils if the problem is actually nasal i'm confused is there a reason then i well, always thought they because, were the airway well because if you let's say you've got a hose right yes and your hose is narrower your airway is narrower yes because your tongue's pushing back against it and there's a bernoulli principle in physics that means the surface tension is increased. Right. So if you're mouth breathing, you're not filtering the air, you, you might be pre, more predisposed to infections, which could result in tonsillitis. And if you've got that smaller hose of an airway and you makes it harder for you to breathe, <clears throat> you, you might hear people gasp or kids gasp at night. And, you know, it's going to create greater tension, you're not going to be able to get into that deep sleep that's necessary to clean the brain, to help the body, the brain reset. And, you know, you're going to wake up sleepy, you're going to wake up sleep deprived, and uh, it's going to cause a whole cascade of consequences. So you got, you've got your swollen tonsils, your abscessed tonsils, you know, sometimes it's warranted to get them out of the way. You want to make sure that that person can breathe. Right. You know, it's it's a serious issue. And there's, there's some thought and debate on more of the cutting edge of uh, sleep science and otolaryngology that maybe if, if you can intervene with myofunctional therapy, maybe you save the tonsils or some of the tonsils. But you want to prioritize that, that air getting into the lungs. You know, it makes that's total, why makes sense. And then when, when should this myofunctional therapy be looked at in a young person? When would you recommend that a, a parent watching this show take their child to be evaluated for myofunctional therapy? What, 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 what range would you give? Well, in, in practical terms, the myofunctional therapy that exists is an emerging field. We, we need to professionalize. We've been laying groundwork do this for to establish an independent separate academy for clinical competency accreditation and a separate one uh, for accrediting teaching institutions uh -huh. um, which is you know the ISO standard international standards organization out of Switzerland for for medical you know fields you know yeah. just like you have code consortium on operative dental education you know you've got your your state boards etc so um so myofunctional therapy in practical terms typically is uh giving instructions with exercises sometimes interdisciplinary should be practically all the time could be collaboration with an orthodontist uh, a surgeon you know to removals or in an adult who's had that high narrow palate for 30 years or 50 years maxillary expansion distraction osteogenesis maxillary expansion brilliant surgical technique that's been pioneered out of stanford with stanley Liu and audrey yoon and uh you know but uh certainly you know like paula pirelli uh, who's a dear friend and family friend and 
mentor and colleague who's uh, Tor University of Rome, Tor Vergata. She pioneered and published the first papers in 2004 with one of my mentors, Christian Gimeno, who, you know, God rest his soul, he passed away a couple of years ago. He's one of the fathers of sleep medicine. He was at Stanford. And she published the first papers on rapid macular expansion disorders back in 2004. Uh -huh. And we know that we can intervene and we want to push this down to birth. You know, so we've been piloting my institute uh, techniques to bring these myofunctional therapy principles to these distinct populations, both acute who are in crisis or trauma, like a premature baby, and non-acute, the kid that might just kind of slip by and winds up mouth breathing because they got punched in the nose or hadn't had a cold and, you know, started mouth breathing and it stuck. And uh, so for infants, for newborns, for pre-crawling infants, for right. crawling infants, for toddlers, these are all distinct populations with their own milestones and markers. And we've been piloting projects in Chile, Japan, United Kingdom, and the United States. And actually, uh, we're going to have a, a body of knowledge meeting on research uh, priorities in uh, near Annecy, France, January first. Sorry, January fourth to eighth of 2023 that will drive the production of five white papers that will come out for this. And one of those white papers will include an ideal model for something that's kind of a trend in public health called the first thousand days of life. I had the good fortune of being invited to be on a presidential commission with the Lycée Palace and the French government, uh, President Macron. And, uh, you know, I managed to get a little, you know, stuff slipped into the report, which came out in September of 2020. And he campaigned on doing something about it. And lo and behold, he got reelected. And he has uh, actually earmarked or budgeted 67 million euros to do something about it. So we want to prepare and present an ideal model. And kudos to, you know, the Republic of France for showing initiative. This is also a European parliament directed initiative where all countries in Europe are pushed to do something about this because if you intervene early enough you can do something profound so we will be able to start and we're actually because we're going to have five or 45 uh, key people from around the world at this research meeting uh, at a beautiful congress sorry conference center that's run by Vo Foundation which is a global organization that was created by uh, Louis Pasteur's chief uh, who helped bring uh, the tremendous work that Louis Pasteur uh, created to, to market. And this is at Les Pensieres Center for Global Health, uh, the uh, Thinkers Center for Global Health. And then about 30 minutes away from there is the city of Eva, where two years ago we registered the International Pediatric Orthodontic Society. So a dear family friend and friend and mentor of mine, Patrick Fellas, created what is, uh, was the first pediatric orthodontic society, the Société Française d'Orthodontie Pédiatrique, the French Pediatric Orthodontic Society, about 12 Beautiful. years ago. Well, Mark, you know what? And, I would speak to you all night and I, I but one, the one last thing. One last thing. Oh, go ahead. We're going to have a late-breaking Congress because we're having so many leaders come together. When in Geneva, Switzerland, January 9th to 13th, we're going to make medical history. Uh, we're going to be talking about pushing sleep into public health, uh, high release, sleep disorders, and we have solutions that the world should know about. So please, you know, share the website of the AMS, AAMSinfo.org, and uh, also my institute, AOMT Inforg. You can find information and uh, tools that will help educate people. And please, by all means, if you have any questions, call me up and send, or send me an email and we'll do our best to take care of you and your loved ones. Absolutely, and you know what, just for the viewers again, what were those two websites again, please? AAMSinfo.org and AOMT info.org thank you well you know what we helped I, we hey, helped start I, 
26 nonprofits around the world to lay a foundation for this, including India, Brazil, Hong Kong, Israel, France, Italy, Scandinavia. And we have uh, three more in development about to open soon. Amazing. Well, I hate that we have to end the show. We're going to definitely have to have you back again. I know that for those viewers out there who have young children, get them evaluated. Let's take a look at what Mark Moeller has told us today. Check out his websites. Mark, have a very good trip to Europe. Thank you for being on the show. Bernard, yeah, I'm going to Warsaw tomorrow, tomorrow night for an ENT Congress, Rhino Forum. But I want to see you in Geneva, Switzerland, reporting live from the the main Congress Center there with the UN, and uh, uh, it's it's a beautiful place. You know what? Send me an invitation, and I guess my wife will have a great excuse to go to Europe. Okie dokie. It's a lovely time of year. You know, the, there's still a Christmas market. You know, great shopping. Uh, great culture. It's, it's a lovely, beautiful, beautiful world. French Alps, well, Swiss Alps. Send me that invitation. And you know what, again? First of all, thank you for what you're doing for the world. Thank you for being on the show. I'm sorry we have to end off for now. But for those viewers out there, let's get our kids checked out. And if you're an adult and you're having these problems, go get checked out. Obviously, from everything you heard tonight, it's so important. Thank you again, Mr. Mueller. And thank you for all you do. And we will see you on the next episode of A Time for Truth show. Have a very good night. Thank you. Thank you, sir. This show was sponsored by A Time for Truth Foundation Incorporated as a community service. Sometimes life can be so damn hard. You don't know where to go. Everything keeps falling apart. Yeah. You try to do your best, but only God knows that you've given everything you've got, but the world takes you down. You just keep moving on at your feet.